Hey guys, I'm AJ Twist. Um, gonna show off my arcade stick here. Uh, I had taken this to Evo uh, 2023 recently. Uh, got an interview by some people. I took it to the Fight Stick Museum that was at Evo too, and those people kind of, you know, love the design and everything about it too. So I want to talk about it. Some people have questions and all that. So I want to give a little detail. I think I'll start off with kind of explaining everything kind of quickly, get the main idea out there. And then maybe toward the end of the video, I'll go ahead and talk a little more into detail about certain things I did for the stick. To start off here, uh, I want to talk about the reason I made the stick. I kind of have a, an arm issue where like, you know, my arms will get cramped and stuff like that when playing uh, for a very long time. So in our case like, like this, where the buttons are kind of close like this, will kind of make my arm cramp up. You know, you know, after a couple hours, you know, my arms feel sore. It'll be kind of sore like that for like another day or so. I'm not sure what the issue I have with my arms is, uh, but I learned playing close like this was one of the reasons. With experimenting, after making my first art case stick was, a, was, a, was about this size. So I learned playing a little bit further apart like this actually uh, helped my arm out a lot more, allowed me to play a little longer. Um, so split design works for me. I didn't know this was called a split box in the past. I never really had a name for it, um, but I'm assuming that's what everyone calls these type of uh, arcade sticks is uh, a split box. The goals for making this stick were to um, have some rails incorporated with it. I did this on one design um, where I had some rails. They were huge rails though. They were really heavy. Um, so uh, I needed to get something kind of small. Uh, I wanted to make this thin and also flat and kind of make it just as compact as possible. Um, well, of course, making it look cool. Uh, I also had another idea for like a modular design with these buttons. Uh, I'll get into that at the end of the video. Uh, the thinness had to be like, I had to measure everything, right? So I needed to be as thin as the lever could be. And I have a magenta lever in here. These are actually really thin. Traditional levers are just a little bit deeper because they have a, a stick that actually comes really far out. And um, you know, that adds a little more depth into it. The magenta doesn't have all that. It's uh, kind of like a digital um, lever here. This is made by Paradise Arcade Shop. Uh, check them out. Uh, but that's what I'm using here. And because of the way it's designed, it's actually really thin. So uh, that allowed me to get this really thin right here. The thickest it could be was dependent on the thickest part of this whole thing, which is the lever itself. And I was able to get that to about 40 millimeters, I believe. So once I decided on that thickness, then I can focus on uh, how big I wanted everything around to be. Um, this side was about good. 12 inches, just about 12 inches by about eight inches. So 12 by eight, it's thickness here in the bottom is about just under two inches, about an inch and three quarters. I did this all in millimeters though. That's a little bit easier to work with when you want to be super precise. Uh, so uh, I was aiming to do about 300 millimeters by 200 millimeters with a 40 millimeter thickness. Uh, and then after adding these walls around it, which are about three mils thick, also the acrylic that's on top and bottom of this is also three millimeters thick. So the end result here is about uh, 306 millimeters by 206 millimeters by uh, 46 millimeters. When it's fully stretched out, this thing is long. It's definitely more than 14 inches. 14 plus four, what, 18? So it's about 18 inches wide when it's opened up like this. Uh, another way to get this very thin too is having a removable lever as well. So that also helps to keep this very thin and thin enough to uh, for it to fit like into like a backpack or a book bag of some sort. It's not gonna take up a lot of room. The removable lever works a lot uh, pretty well too. So this lever doesn't get caught on something inside or possibly break from being in a backpack, tossed around and stuff like that. One other thing I did with this design is uh, add this little loophole right here. That's part of the frame. Um, because the lever can attach to this little key ring here. So I wanted to do that. I didn't want to get the lever on the key ring separated from the fight stick itself. So adding that little loop here to add this key ring was uh, kind of a last second idea, uh, but something that I had wanted to add it to it. So it's there now. Oh yeah, also for the outside here, I have a little open in door so I don't hit this button accident. I learned that uh, when I was playing, my pinky would reach over right here and it would uh, hit the start button. I originally had the start button up here. 
So when I would hold it like this, my pinky would reach over so I can do this and I would hit the start button sometimes. And that's a uh, forfeit of a round in uh, tournament play. So I don't want to do that on accident in tournament. So I moved the start button lower and I added a door so I wouldn't hit the share button that's here now. Um, so that's a little thing that I also added last minute. The fight stick overall is 3D printed. Uh, this uh, dust cover is 3D printed. Uh, the wall around here, this blue wall, is a turquoise PLA filament that I use and kind of add some rocky design. Turquoise is a top of rock. Uh, I found this filament just randomly on, on, on Amazon. I was like, oh, I want to do that. I want to use it. And then um, to make it, give it that turquoise look, um, to this, I found this rock design on, on Art Illustrator or Adobe somewhere. Uh, so downloaded that template there. Um, got some designs in the back here too. So it just wraps all the way around in this blue filament. The original idea was to print this whole thing in PLA uh, with this turquoise filament. But then I learned that PETG is a more stable uh, filament uh, to 3D print with. It requires higher temperatures to print, but it is a lot more durable in the sense that it won't warp. PLA can warp pretty easy in some high heat. Uh, if I were to leave this in the car for you know, a hot summer day, it might actually start to warp. Uh, PETG is supposed to be less vulnerable to warping and heat. So uh, PETG is the way I end up going uh, with the frame. It's 3D printed in multiple parts as well. Um, but one of the things I had to do though is make sure I can fit the rail in here. So I had to measure around that. Uh, and of course, making sure everything fits. So it's kind of like Tetris, getting uh, all these pieces uh, to fit inside of here. Uh, I did use a lot of filament to print this frame. Uh, so the inside frame, uh, I think without any testing filament, you know, all the fail prints I had, I think I'd use one whole spool of PETG for the inside here. I know I have multiple colors because I end up running out of black eventually. So I end up just printing in some gray that I had. Um, I, I wanted it to be all black originally. Um, and I had some white for testing purposes and stuff. This is about a one full spool. This is, what is it? One kilogram, I believe, of filament. Maybe half, honestly. I, I'm not exactly sure. I don't remember because I did so many test prints, but it's about, I'll say, we'll say half. I think about half of a spool is what I use for the entire framing uh, of the, uh, of this arcade stick and then we have multiple sides here right because it splits open so one side of it is the lever uh, also have my start and home and, and share buttons over here on the side um, and then have some LEDs on the lever side here too to kind of show me you know when I'm first second third or fourth player uh, all that information can be provided by a brook board which is on the other side over here um, also the magenta has a, uh, since it's a digital lever, uh, you can have different profiles on how sensitive your directions are, uh, your inputs for up and down and everything. Uh, so there's a button here that can change those modes so you can have different profiles for different type of you know sensitivity for maybe certain games. But they have a kind of an output here. So uh, I attach the button on the inside right here so I can change profiles without having to dig inside here or remove this bottom uh, acrylic piece here. On this side, this is a, uh, the brains of it here. We got the brook board in here. This is where all the wires are attached to. I use the uh, the Brook Universal Fight Board PCB. It works for uh, Xbox Series, Xbox One, 360, PS4, PS3, Wii U, Switch, um, and various other consoles as well. And then from the brook board, uh, a USB loopy here to go into this uh, output right here. So this is where I can plug in a USB-C uh, wire here and then that USB-C goes into your PlayStation or your Xbox or your PC, which is what I use it for. But it doesn't work for PS5 and Street Fighter 6 now requires that you have a legit PS5 controller so it can play. So you, can know, you can't use a PS4 controller to play a PS5 game on a PS5, which is crazy. So to combat that, Brooke developed this little thing right here. Uh, this is their UFB UP5. Yeah, UFB UP5. Uh, so that's in here and that's attached to the brook board. That was a last minute addition. Uh, also, we got some buttons right here, the side two. So whatever, if, if this is my, my R1 and R2, then this is my L1 and L2. I'm not sure which they are. I get confused which they are. But the bottom here are my uh, R3, L3. So uh, joystick inputs when you push in your stick. That's what these are down here. Uh, the top of here is um, 
they're Cherry MX Brown switches under here. Uh, and they're on a PCB that I custom made myself with some etching, uh, which I'll explain more about how the etching went and all that. But yeah, key switches, keyboard switches are in here, MX Browns. Uh, and then I soldered them to my custom PCB. That makes some type of contact with these wires here, which connected to the brickboard. Um, everything else is just like standard uh, arcade buttons. I think there are sound walls that I have in here. These smaller ones, I don't know what they're called, but they're just typical, you know, push buttons. So that's basically everything from the outside and what you can see on the inside as far as the hardware and the inside of it goes. As far as how the built went, like I was saying earlier, it's in multiple pieces. Uh, this whole uh, right side here with the buttons is probably the most complicated side. This side was a lot easier. I think there's like four pieces here if you don't count the walls. There's this one section here uh, that is just support for the walls on the outside. Uh, and this is like an L shape right here. And then that connects to this whole center piece here, which this is where the rails are connected to. And then um, over here again, same L piece right here. So it's a mirror. This is all basically for support to hold up the walls to kind of shield the rails from the outside as well. This whole middle piece, it just holds the LEDs here and it, it houses the buttons right there. And of course, uh, all the way around has screw holes so I can screw in the walls the uh, PLA of it. And then on this side, on the right side here, uh, it's also kind of the same design where I got this big L shape here that holds everything on the edge right here. On both sides, it's kind of mirrored. And then I have a whole like middle frame uh, to kind of hold the PCB that I built for my, uh, my uh, buttons up top. Uh, also to hold these buttons on the side here. So there's a whole middle section right here, an L shape here. So that's three pieces so far. And then I have um, two more pieces. Uh, this actually holds the PCB in place and also kind of uh, houses the, uh, the buttons so they don't shift so much. And then this is a top layer right here that's also printed. That's just there for design to kind of cover up some of the mess. Uh, also for overall support to make sure this is like kind of flattened down. Um, and then also to have some design on it too. All right, here is my USB-C port and the rails for this side are connected on the outside right here. So the rails right here need to be connected on the inside and then on the outside they're over here. To hold all these 3D printed pieces together, uh, I used a lot of different um, M2, M3, M4, and M5 screws of various different lengths too. This is what's holding a lot of the pieces together. So all the 3D printed pieces, once they're printed separately, they need to be held together. Uh, so I would use that. And then I, I would melt these inserts. These uh, they're like brass or copper inserts. Uh, they're threaded inside to fit your M3 and M4 screws. So you would put your soldering iron, usually is what I use. Uh, you'll put this on the tip of it and then you'll kind of just melt it into your print and that would this will stay in there and then it will give you a threaded hole to kind of put this into so that's what i use all the way around to to support the a lot of parts of the stick here but that's how everything is held together with a mix of different m2 to m5 screws with these uh m2 to m5 uh inserts and then the final thing is the acrylic out here uh it's about a it's, it's acrylic it's about three millimeters thick i believe and I got this uh, custom cut through a website called Send Cut Send. You can basically make a design, uh, a file uh, on like Art Illustrator. Uh, so you can have the correct measurements and everything. And then you can send that file to Send Cut Send. And I think they can give you like an instant quote uh, on that. So you can get an idea of how much it's gonna cost. You can choose the material. You have tons of materials, uh, different types of plastics and woods and metals even. Um, and then within about a week or so, they, they'll, they'll get it cut and shipped it out to you. So I think it took about a week for me to send them my file and then get the uh, you know end product back. But once I got these acrylic pieces um, cut, then uh, that's when I started to put everything together. And uh, pretty much uh, the design was kind of based on the acrylic itself and how I did some of these corners because uh, you know I can't change the acrylic once it's cut and I can't 3D print something and change the acrylic until it fits right. So I got the acrylic done first and then 3D printed my models, make sure everything fits and then kind of just went from there.
also I noticed when I would play, you know, you get crazy with shifting the lever here. And as you can see, it's shrinking. It's kind of closing in on itself as I like do stuff. And I have to constantly like reopen it again, play, 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 get smaller. I have to open it up again. So I needed a way to stop this from just rolling itself closed. Last minute design again, I made this. Uh, this is like a little stopper, kind of just sits right in here. So once it stretches out, it falls in. That keeps it from shutting while I'm playing. So there's the brick board, right? Everything's wired to it. All the buttons go to the brick board. Um, and then the, uh, the wires from the other side where the magenta is, where the lever is, and all my other buttons and LEDs and everything, all that runs through this cable sleeve all the way across here, kind of goes to the middle here, across, runs on the bottom of the railing here uh, into this side right here. And then when you close it up, you can see how the uh, sleeving here kind of just closes in and kind of just wraps up inside there nothing special i did to get that to happen it's just something i noticed happens just naturally um but this really helps to keep all those cables in check and it's a pretty stiff like nylon braided sleeve but that's how that works on the inside so if i were to uh, remake this a couple things i would want to do is uh make a, a latch that will hold this shut so when I pull it out of my bag, it doesn't like start opening right away. Uh, I would also uh, want to um, have a compartment somewhere in here where I can store maybe this, uh, the little stoppers that I made for the rails, and also to store uh, my USB cable. I don't want to do wireless, you know, at tournaments, it's kind of annoying to deal with the wireless controller, so I'd rather be wired. But I need a place for this. So that's, I wanted something like that. I thought I can squeeze it in here, but uh, it doesn't really fit. This is a pretty long wire, so it doesn't always fit perfectly in there. Um, and I guess rather than have a place uh, for my little rail stoppers here, I think um, designing something that would maybe pop out on the side right here to stop the rails from closing would be kind of a better idea. Uh, that's something that I would need to look into maybe for a second revision of this. But if anyone has any questions, uh, definitely uh, leave me a comment below. Uh, you can find me um, on social media, Instagram, uh, X, Twitter. Um, I think there's only two social medias I'm really uh, involved with. Maybe join my Discord, maybe, I guess. There's not, nothing going on there, but you can you could do that too. Uh, if you go to ajtwist.com, you can find all my social links over there. Um, or just maybe check the descriptions or something here on YouTube. Here's a box of failed prints. Maybe not failed prints, but I can probably make this stick again with all the pieces in here. But this is how much filament I went through. Different frames, different ideas, legs. Actually, to give a quick idea of how this works too. So here's like one piece. This would be the, uh, the side where the lever sits. The lever is attached to the acrylic, uh, but they would kind of like sit like this. And then I would um, screw them together from right here. So drop a screw in here. Uh, those inserts will go into this and then bam, this will be connected. That's dirty here and the rails uh, would screw into this, which this would also have some copper inserts in here as well. And then just a screw to hold the rail to the printed frame. This would cover it. A wall would be attached around here. And then there's also various holes here too to um, attach those blue walls. On the other side though, here's like the middle frame. And then again, a piece like this would be right here. This is not the right piece, but you get the idea. It would attach here somehow. And then the PCB will sit right here. In here, I have something like battery contacts. So I have something like this sitting inside there. And so basically the PCB would make contact on top here. And then I have wire soldered to this, the hole. And then the wire comes from the bottom right here. It goes through these holes right here. So this sits in here, something like this. PCB on top, making contact. Wire comes out the bottom right here. 
Uh, but again, you know, get a piece that sits right here. Yeah, piece will sit like this. Screw in right here to hold this all together. Wall goes around here, so this is basically like the bottom of the arcade stick. Buttons up here. This is that middle layer. PCB here. This actually holds the PCB down. And then uh, brook board will be right here. Bam, right there on top. Be screwed in on the sides right here somewhere to hold that down. And then top layer on top. So that's kind of how the stick is built. An issue I had was the PCB shifting around and then losing contacts over here or rubbing up against the acrylic holes um, and the buttons, you know, not making uh, just friction against the side. So the buttons would get stuck when you push it in, it wouldn't pop back up. Uh, so I made this, I don't think this helps, but I decided to just make these holes just big enough for the buttons to fit inside of here. Uh, so if it did shift, it wouldn't shift too much over so the acrylic wouldn't catch it. I'm not sure if that really worked in the end or not, um, but that's something I did do. I really like what Arcade Paradise uh, does. Um, for the uh, the buttons I use, I remember seeing this at an EVO one time, the uh, M-Press uh, fight, fighting case or a uh, fight stick here. It's not even a stick actually, it's a board I guess. And I saw this board and I was like, this is amazing. This is very thin. How they get it so thin? How did they fit these buttons in here? Because I know the button plungers can be kind of thick sometimes, kind of deep. They custom made a PCB and they actually use key switches like keyboard switches key like you know what your keyboard uses this arcade paradise also makes this um these are little actual keyboard switches you can actually put inside of a uh, actual button housing that you normally would like your sanwas uh buttons you can drop those in there and have an actual key switch as a button so like that's awesome too and that also show me how thin you can get a board but what those buttons are these uh and these are arcade paradise's um OBS MX plungers. Uh, these are the clears, so you can see the key switch underneath. So I used this whole setup for a while on my uh, my first stick, my uh, wooden box one. Yeah, they were good. So I decided to go with MX brown switches and make my own PCB so I can attach uh, this plunger on top of it, all because of this impress stick that inspired me to do so. So guys, go check those out if those look interesting to you. To make my PCB here, uh, what I had to do was learn how to etch. I actually found a random uh, YouTube video, this little girl explaining how to etch. Something that I just figured, like, can I do? Can I do my own etching? Can I make my own PCB? How hard is that really? To uh, quickly explain how to uh, etch, um, so you have some copper planing like this. Uh, something I just bought off of Amazon. But to get these traces etched, to get rid of some of this copper, uh, you can use some acid. So this is the type of acid uh, you can buy. Um, you can kind of reuse it a couple times. You gotta be very careful. Go look at some videos like I did to kind of get more information on how to do that exactly. But what you would do is um, masking the copper in some way. Build your traces. I used um, Adobe Art Illustrator. Uh, I just used that. You can get some good measurements, get some good straight lines and everything in there. It took a while to measure the key switches and the prongs on them and the little hole stem that it has in the bottom of it. Um, so, but once I got those measurements, those measurements just right, uh, I was able to create this PCB. And then you would print that. You need to use a laser printer. Laser specifically because uh, a laser printer is like this powdery toner, right? it's toner. That toner uh, is attracted to hot uh, surfaces. So that's why when you use a laser printer, the paper is hot. So you can do that onto some like clear sheets like projector paper, um, but the projector paper didn't work out for me all the time. Sometimes my traces wouldn't be complete. So what actually uh, worked better was actual circuit board thermal paper. You print onto this, like one side's like normal paper, but this side is, is actually uh, glossy. So you would print on this side of it, your design, and then you would uh, iron it. You would Your design would be on here. You'll put it face down onto your copper plate and get an iron to go over it. So the uh, so this will heat up and then it'll, the toner will transfer on to the copper. And then once you have your, your toner on there you can also use if you really want to get just super like DIY you can just get a permanent marker that will work to draw your traces out like that 
And then once you uh, got the toner, your masking on there, you drop it in the acid. Uh, everything that isn't mass will be eaten away. Anything under the toner or under the uh, permanent marker will stay. And then you'll you know, get something like this. Really, you gotta plan out your traces and where they're gonna go. They can get pretty thin though, but the toner transfer isn't always precise, so I had to keep it a kind of thick, too thin. I probably wouldn't, it wouldn't trace well. But once you have um, it etched out, you gotta remove the toner so you can have your traces visible in case you need to solder onto them. So then uh, something uh, like, uh, like paint thinner would work too. Just get it on some like cotton balls or something like that and you just scrub it away and that will get rid of your permanent marker or your toner, leaving just your copper traces there. But once you got it all clear, your copper is exposed so you can solder to it. Also, once you're, you're finished with the design, the other thing was drilling the holes in here to for the uh, the prongs of the keyboard switches and a little stem on it too. Uh, I had to drill those and again if I was just slightly off a little bit either the key switch wouldn't fit or the whole button would be a little off center and then it would rub against uh, the acrylic here too. So those are issues that I came across multiple times. That's why I have multiple versions of this. I use some very tiny drill bits uh, to make sure I, I think I broke one I, actually the one I use is actually missing here but I actually use these to to drill the tiny holes for the uh, keyboard switch connections but this is a template I use to make sure these drilled holes were precise so they wouldn't you know get caught on the acrylic here um, I made a whole little jig that this would slide into this would go on top somewhere and this would help me aim to for these uh, holes i would drill the original idea for this was for to have these buttons be able to slide out have these cut out and so i was supposed to be able to slide this out and then slide in a new piece right here or originally i was supposed to be able to just snap it on top and be able to snap it out with some magnets that was the original plan um and then these down here would make contact with something on the bottom. Buttons will work. Magnet holds it down tight. Didn't work out. Magnets I had were not strong enough and the contacts on the bottom would push it up so much that it wouldn't sit flush and all the contacts would not make contacts because some pushed harder than others and when one pushed too hard, the others around it wouldn't make contact anymore. You know, unless I push it down super hard then they will all make contact. But again, magnets weren't strong enough for that. So I redesigned it so the so uh, the contacts would stay flush and hard down. So the design I came up with was to be able to slide in. So this would be like the top and bottom of this right here. So this frame right here, the rails would be held in on the side right here. And then the idea was buttons would be on here, the whole layout. So you would have, you know, a, a whole thing like this. PCB would be in the in the middle right there. Your buttons would be on top right here, and this whole thing would it would slide in, and then the contacts would be made down here, and PCB would be sitting in here, and should be good. But I still had the issue of those contacts, some being stronger than other, and pushing up, and everything not making complete contact. And also the PCB will sometimes shift a little bit too which you know then i would get the whole buttons rubbing against the acrylic and everything so i had all those flaws couldn't figure it out took me a few weeks and i just end up giving up because uh, by this point i was trying to get this ready for evo um to compete with it but the whole sliding mechanism just needed more time more thinking uh more printing printing takes forever all these pieces by the way too would take uh maybe six hours to 12 hours like something like this will probably be almost like 10 hours or so sometimes uh these pieces would be like six to eight hours um so yeah they they, they took a while to print too uh, so I couldn't just keep printing, printing, and, and retrying, retrying, because it would take a whole couple days before everything was printed out that I can test it. And then after realizing that doesn't work, take another couple of days to redesign something and, and get it printed. Um, so it took a while. And then my printer ended up dying halfway through the project too. And it, I was out for like a week. And then a month before evil, I realized, you know what? I can't spend time on, on creating this thing. I need to, I need to play. I need to play Street Fighter and practice and play Tekken and play Soul Calibur. Those are the games I entered. Um, so I ended up giving up on the whole sliding mechanism after that. But that was the idea 
behind us. I ended up just making just a static frame in here. So PCB contact still there, but there's no sliding mechanism now, nothing like that. Uh, but that's something that I'll probably start to get back into fairly soon. Anyone has tips, questions, feel free to ask me, I guess, in the comments below on this YouTube video. Find me on social media. I'm on X or Twitter. I'm on Instagram. Uh, I don't use Facebook much. You might be able to find me there. AJTwist.com. You can find a lot of my social media links there. Um, yeah, thanks for watching. Thanks to uh, the people at Evo. Uh, the Reversal channel uh, interviewed me about it. I wish I knew what to say then. Um, and I also took this to the people that were uh, doing the Arcade Museum at Evo. Um, they have their own Facebook group. Their Facebook group is the Retro Arcade Stick Collective. If you're interested in seeing some interesting arcade sticks, fight sticks out there, yeah, go check them out. Yeah, I think that's everything. Thanks again. And um, if you guys are interested in seeing other projects that I've worked on, let me know. Maybe I'll start making videos about some of those. Uh, I have ideas for different type of arcade sticks that I want to build that are not necessarily split. Um, um, if you guys are interested in seeing me build those, which would be more simpler than this, uh, let me know. I'll, I'll make videos on that uh, if there's any interest. And if you want to see any other type of content, I don't know, let me know. Just communicate in the, in the comments below or find me on those various other social medias. But thank you, everyone. Thanks for your interest. I feel validated now. Thank you. Have a good one. Peace out.